and as a top seed, my decided in first place to start the match. So she also will be the one to finish it. And she carries on with her striking form. All 10 pins down with the first ball. Uh, Camilla looked, looked a good ball, but a little bit high in the pocket leaves the four pin. Yeah, it was actually a, a very good, a good shot from her hand. Um, maybe it's just the lanes that's been changing a bit. I always think it's a good ball in the pocket if you leave the four pin. Yeah, it's a really easy pin to convert anyway. Yeah, and it's a very small change you need to to get all the ten down. Oh, she got the wrong line on that one. Yeah. Leaves a three six ten down to seventeen in the first frame, giving the advantage to Mai. Not the best start for Camilla, but no open frames, so out of trouble. Oh, she's staying clean. Just that one split in the four games bowled so far. Whoa! Ooh. There was a lazy tenton. So my really rubbing it in there, was starting with a double in the final game, the final and deciding game. Mai actually says the thing she least understand about bowling is um, why her finger hurts so much every time she takes a break from bowling. And right. I guess that's that's a problem when if you're maybe grabbing the ball just a bit or some like you to have a very tight feeling in the thumb hole. Well, Mai certainly works a bowling ball well on her release. Yeah, that's that's really a, a strong side of hers. That's her release. It's throws a semi roller. A lot of action on that ball. Camilla knows how to work a bowling ball too. She actually, uh, when I started bowling, Camilla um, was actually teaching me how to bowl. So my basic game is. Um, Actually, uh, the making of um, Camilla. Well, when I first saw Camilla bowling years ago, I told her to bend her knee a little bit more. She had a very straight knee. <laughs> and she reminded me of that today when I was talking to her just before the semi finals. Yeah? She says she still remembers that and still tries to remember to bend her knee when she's bowling. She was bowling badly in Malta, and I told her to bend her knee. In the next game, she bowled 258. <laughs> Not so, bad. So I was a hero for a little while. <laughs> Did, didn't, didn't last all that long, but. <laughs> That's a nice position. It was nice while it lasted. In. Yeah. <laughs> well, my Ginga certainly found her line. Four strikes in a row, 60 in the second frame. Yes. 23 pins ahead of Camilla now. And another one. Perfect hit. Five in a row. All the way. Now, can we think about closing the tournament with a perfect game, do you think? A 300, 12 strikes in a row? It would be the first of uh, the tournament, actually. Be a wonderful finish. When you look at the lane pattern, it's not that, the old pattern is not that, e uh, that difficult. But when you look at the lanes, how how different the pairs are. It's really, really hard to shoot 300 here because the lanes are different and also it's really, yeah, developing when you play on it. When it last year, uh, Nicole Sanders, the defending champion this year, she won the tournament last year, Nicole Sanders of the Netherlands. She bowled a perfect game here, was it, in this tournament? Um, not that I know of, no. Oh, maybe it was in the Barcelona Open. 
Yes, indeed. We have four tournaments a year here in Barcelona. The Catalan Open and the Barcelona Open. The Federation Cup, which is a team from Asia, another team from uh, the Americas against Europe. And of course, this wonderful trophy for the Summer Ranch Trophy for the youngster under 20 years of age and the European Women's Masters. Oh, there she goes again. Yeah, it's really nice to see how the capital of Catalonia um, always brings a lot of good bowlers and a lot of good tournaments. And uh, they're indeed in European bowling a very uh, important player, especially also for the women bowling, since they're hosting the only women tournament but also uh, gives female bowlers a small advantage in both the European Tour tournaments. Well, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the Catalan Federation that uh, run bowling in this area, in Barcelona area, they do more, than, more for the sport of bowling than all the rest of the European federations put together. I'll probably get shouted at for saying that, but it's, <laughs> I think it's true. Now, Mai has seven strikes in a row, is 150 in the fifth frame. Ooh, very nearly leave a 4 7 9 split for Camilla, but she that just comes with the 4 7. So I think we can safely say that uh, Mai Ginga is the 2010 champion the European Women's Masters <laughs> and the President's Samaran, uh, Samaranch Trophy sponsored by the late President of the IOC will go to Maria Chichenko of Latvia that trophy goes with a thousand euros to the youngster uh, somebody under the age of 20 that comes out with the best score very high from Camilla, but uh, she got all 10 pins down. So 165 in the seventh frame. Yeah, and if Mai closes out with strikes. And if Mai gets a strike here, it should be 210, if my maths are correct. Taking a time. Oh. Good looking ball. <laughs> and it's eight strikes in a row now. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe we'll see the first 300 game. 300 game. It would be nice. Well, that would be a wonderful finish to a wonderful tournament. Yeah. And that will also give her an extra bonus in this tournament for the highest single game. I think the high game at the moment is 285, if I remember rightly. We'll give